In our last lesson, we discussed the early days of the development of the first machines that could do calculations, going all the way back to the 19th century when Mr. Charles Babbage, who uh, was a mathematician who thought that a steam engine could be built that could do the kind of computations that were done by the human computers of that day. And then we jump uh, forward uh, to about 1938 and introduced our group to Mr. Conrad Zusa, who was considered by many to be the father of the computer and the man who built the first electronic computer. I believe his was called the Z1. In the United States, the United States Army commissioned the University of Pennsylvania and two scientists, J. Presper Eckert and uh, John Malkley, to build the ENIAC, which was the first attempt at an American computer. And then we ended that session with the invention in the end of the 1940s, when Mr. Bardeen, Shockley, and Bretain won the Nobel Prize for the invention of the transistor, a device that replaced the vacuum tube and marked a significant improvement in the field of electronics. In this lesson, we're going to talk about the first early commercial computers. And uh, our first topic will be these two gentlemen whom we've already met, Mr. Eckert and Mr. Monkley, who became convinced that there was actually a market for one of these things. So they started their own company, the Eckert and Monkley Computer Company. Uh, they started with a loan from Mr. Uh, Eckert's father. The company was um, marked from the very beginnings with a, a, a lack of cash. It was a problem for them. And they desperately needed customers and backers. And they found their first customer here with the United States Census Bureau. This was coming up on 1950, and they were mandated by Congress to get this census done because that was how... Uh, voting districts were determined, and so they became the world's first customer of a electronic computer, the Bureau of the Census. Prudential Insurance Company came in there next, but one of the more interesting uh, parties in this, uh, in this story is Mr. Harry Strauss of the American Totalizator Company, which is a company that made those signs at the racetrack that calculate the odds and so forth. Mr. Strauss suspected that this new uh, brain that was being invented at, at the Eckert and Monkley Company might one day be a competitor to his totalizator equipment, and so he just became involved by investing in the company. Unfortunately for Eckert and Monkley, Mr. Strauss was killed in an airplane accident, and uh, that backing soon vanished. Eckert Mockley was working on the UNIVAC, which was uh, one of the more uh, famous machines in the history of the computer. In fact, became quite a celebrity before everything was said and done. Other early contenders, uh, you know, the United States was not the only place this work was being done. In England, the Day Lines Company, Day Lines Company, a, a large bakery became interested in this uh, computer equipment to handle some of their paperwork needs. And a couple of their executives met Mr. Herman Goldstein, who had been involved in the ENIAC project. And he introduced them to Morris Wilkes, you may recall in our first video, who had developed the EDSAC computer in England at the University of Cambridge. And in fact, Jay Lyons invested money in that EDSAC project, and after it was completed, started working on their own project with Mr. Wilkes' assistance, and built the Lyons Electronic Office, known as LEO. And this actually became the world's first commercial computer. They beat the gentleman in the United States getting to the market with their product. Back in the United States, Eckert Mockley's financial troubles finally caught up with them, and they ended up selling out to Remington Rand, a, a company that manufactured typewriters and electric razors and tabulating machines and a number of different things. 
the gentleman who ran Remington Rand uh, was interested in investing in new businesses, and he bought the Eckert Mockley Company, and it was actually Remington Rand that delivered that first Univac computer to the Bureau of the Census. We are all very familiar with a company we refer to as Big Blue, IBM. The founder of IBM, Mr. Thomas Watson, was not particularly interested in the computer business. Uh, IBM had a successful punch card tabulating business, and Mr. Watson didn't see the need for a computer. However, Thomas Watson Jr. was a different story. He saw the need and finally convinced his father that the company had to become involved in the business, otherwise they were going to be behind the eight ball. And so IBM developed their first computer, the IBM 650. And it was very shortly thereafter that the IBM 650 became the uh, leading selling computer in the United States, primarily because of IBM's terrific uh, sales force. And then we end the 1950s with the creation of another piece of electronics, the integrated circuit. And we will continue that discussion in our next video.